Glory to God. So today we want to continue the uh, series that we started on walking in divine health. How many of y'all are interested in walking in divine health? Uh, you know, over the years we've done a lot of teaching on healing, um, and uh, we know people are, are using the things that they taught to uh, receive healing when they get sick. But we want to take it a step further and talk about how to walk in divine health, how to walk and live without being sick. And last week, um, Toya started out dealing with uh, our expectation or our belief around this matter. And that really is where we have to start. The first place that we have to start is people have to believe that it's possible. And uh, it, not many people, to be honest, really believe it's possible to walk in this earth and never be sick. Uh, but she did an exceptional job last week of um, setting up the expectation that it is possible and that uh, and, and did an exceptional job of keeping us focused on this idea that the patriarchs and the people in the beginning who lived uh, hundreds of years, uh, people like Abraham who lived up to 120 and his eyes were not dim, neither was his natural strength diminished. Um, she did an excellent job of making the point that we have the same body with the same capability. Amen? So let's say that. I have the same body, and it has the same capabilities. Now, we know that God did put a cap on how long we would live on the earth, but he didn't our bodies are not made out of different material than Methuselah's body, than Abraham's body. It never talked about where he started making us, making us out of something different. So that was the point that she was making. We have the same body with the same capability. Um, and she also touched on the fact that uh, Jesus, uh, as a part of the atonement, he took our sicknesses, bore our pain. And so I want to just expand on that a little bit. She touched on it, but I want to expand on that and make the point that the children of Israel in the Old Testament had a covenant of healing, right? They could get healed. They did get healed. Hezekiah, for example, was healed. Naaman the leper was healed. People got healed. So they had a covenant of healing in the Old Testament, which then begs the question, then if healing was possible... And as she alluded to last week, uh, that they could live a long life, why did, what was the necessity for Isaiah 53? Why did Jesus take our sickness and bear our pains? He took them because he didn't want us to have them. And that is further evidence that really God's, God's plan for humanity is that we walk without sickness. That's why Jesus took them. He took them because he didn't want us to have them. He didn't want us to carry them, so he carried them. So he bore them. Um, just like he, he took our sin. Why did he take our sin? He didn't want us to have it. Amen? So Jesus did what it took to rid our human experience, to make it possible that our human experience be free, free from, from sin, and he did the same thing with sickness and disease. He made it possible. Y'all following me? Yeah. So, so the first thing we have to do is to really embrace the idea that it is possible to live in this earth without sickness, without disease. We have to be willing to embrace that idea. How many of y'all are willing to embrace that idea? Yeah. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is I want to deal with another expectation. Because dealing with this expectation is critical as we move forward and begin to talk about how exactly can we live this life and not have sickness and not have disease. Um, and it's important that we deal with this expectation of how uh, because it's going to set the stage. And I want to start by pointing out that living in this world without sickness is a lofty goal. Would you, would you agree with that? That's, that's lofty. That's a high goal. 
that's not, you know, uh, you know, I, that's just not some little bitty thing. Saying I want to go every day. Somebody say every day. Every day. And not experience sickness. I want to go my entire life and not experience disease. That's a lofty goal. And it really, when you just really think about it, it really is, uh, would be attaining to God's best for us. So what we're going after is attaining God's best. Y'all follow with me? It's God's best for us to walk. With, it's his highest. And so the point that I want to make starting out is, is in order to get God's best, we can't, we can't give half effort. We can't be half in and half out. We can't be um, half committed. If you want God's best, you got to, God's best don't come cheap. Amen. Would y'all agree with it? It don't come cheap and it's not easy. So we do need to go into this with the mindset that what we're after here is not easy. And if that's not our mindset, we're, 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 we're done before we even start. Getting God's best is not easy. Turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, very, very uh, well-read portion of Scripture. I'll read verse 1 and then verse 2. Verse 2 is what I want to get to. I beseech you, therefore, brothers, that, uh, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so there's a lot in these, these two verses, but I want to key in on the last sentence of the second verse. And this verse reveals to us that there are different levels to God's will that we can attain to. Y'all following me? There is the good, and I looked these words up in the, in the, in the Greek to really try to get a, a better understanding of what they actually mean. And uh, the word good, if you look it up in the Greek, the definition is good. But acceptable has an interesting definition. And the definition of acceptable is, um, let me look at it here, is fully agreeable or well-pleasing. So the fully agreeable or well-pleasing will. So there's the good, then there's the agreeable, meaning did you all know that sometimes it can, it, it, we, can, we can experience things that are not God's perfect will, but he's willing to go along with it? He's willing to agree with it. So, but it's not, it's not his perfect will, but it's like, eh, it's not such a huge deal, whatever. But then this word perfect is the word that means complete. So there's the complete will of God. And walking this life free from sickness, disease, and pain is his complete will. Now, what we need to understand is a certain level of effort will get you the good will. A higher level of effort will get you the well-pleasing. But what it's going to take to get the complete, it's going to take some effort. Y'all following me? So the point is, is that we need to be willing to put forth some effort if this is what we want. Amen? So let me see. If this is what you want, let me see your hand. And if it's not, you know, because some people, some people evaluate and say, well, you know, it's kind of like um, if you got kids that are in school, just cover their ears right now. Um, it's kind of like when I was in school, when I was, well, particularly when I was in college, if I got a B, I'm happy. I'm not, I'm not willing to put forth the effort, the extra effort that it's going to take to get an A. 
to me, a B was acceptable. I'm like, I'm happy with that. So some people evaluate the payoff and they think, eh, you know, the effort that it takes to get that payoff, eh, I'm just not going for it. So everybody, everybody doesn't have to raise their hand that this is what they want because some people can just say, you know, that's going to take more effort than I'm really willing to put forth. But after having evaluated that it's going to take effort, how many are willing or, or, or want to live the rest of their days without sickness? If you're on Facebook and you want to live the rest of your days without sickness, give me, a, give me a thumbs up. And so what we're saying is, if this is what I want, I also have to be willing to put forth the effort required to get it. How many of y'all are willing to put forth the effort required? Or how many of y'all say, well, let me see first. <laughs> I'll wait till after class or really after this series and then I'll get back to you. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I'm going to tell you. Um, I, I, I got to tell you. And I'm not bragging. I'm just stating facts. There really is not, there's very little sickness in our house. And I'm telling you, it's worth the effort. It, it, it's effort. Don't get me wrong. It's effort. But it's worth it to, to look up in a cabinet. In fact, we don't have any medicine in our medicine cabinet. We need to think of another name for it. Uh, I was talking to somebody the other day. Um, one of the things that the kids are required to do by the school is to take temperature before you go to school. We don't have a th we've never had a thermometer. I don't think we've ever had. We ever had a thermometer? We've never had a thermometer. And I'm telling you this to tell you it's worth the effort. It's worth the effort. Um, you know, in terms of prescriptions, Micah had a prescription one time because she had thrush. It's a whole story along with that on her tongue. That's a different, 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 uh, different day. I got poison ivy one time. Bad. So I had to get a shot in the butt <laughs> and a prescription. I had a real bad respiratory infection the year Toy and I got married 20 years ago. So I had a prescription for that. Other than that, so, the, so I can tell you from experience that it is possible to go, to just not have to deal with sickness all the time. And I could also tell you that it's worth it. Y'all following me? It's worth it. I remember Pastor Cox was telling me one day, because I used to work with Pastor Cox in his consulting firm, and I hadn't noticed it, and he was doing a class or something one Sunday, and he made the observation I worked with him for 10 years. He said, he, Noel never missed a day of work because he was sick. Now I'm up to 24 years, 10 with him, 14 since. I still have never missed a day of work because I've been sick. So it's possible, but it's work. I can tell you that too. It's work, but it's worth it. Y'all believe it's worth it? Amen. So, so, uh, so that's the expectation that we need to set up front so that once we get into this, we understand that this is not something that's going to, it's not cheap. All right? So with that said, let's get into the first thing. We're, this, this class is going to go on for some weeks. Um, we'll kind of break it up in between and put it, you know, intersperse some different subjects just so people don't get bored with the same subject. You know, people do that. Um, so today I'm going to start with one thing that we have to do to uh, walk and live without sickness and disease. All right. The first thing is, I'm just going to say it and then we'll start looking at scriptures. What does that say? We got to live right. If you have any hope 
of living without sickness and disease, you're going to have to live right. Now, before you tune me out and say, oh, I know you got to live right, just stay with me. Um, but this right here is a must. Can I hear somebody say live right? So let's start looking at some verses, and we'll do some things here as we go along. So turn with me to Exodus chapter 15. So in the 15th chapter of Exodus, I want to read just one verse, and that is the 26th verse. And it says... If you diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God, do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments, keep all of his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. So what he's saying here is, if, then. If you do this, then you won't even have disease come on you. And that's what we're talking about, right? Being free from it. So this verse tells us that one of the things that we have to do to live this life free of disease is to obey God. Now, I told you that, um, that this is going to take effort. And I want, you to, I want to pay attention to how he, how he framed this. If you were diligently, not sometimes... But diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God. That's one. Do what is right in his sight. That's two. Listen to his commandments. That's three. Keep all his statutes. That's four. Now, because of, I do want to tell you that because of, of the grace that is a part of our covenant, it, we don't have to be perfect to walk free of sickness and disease. But we got to be serious about it. We got to, we got to, you know, you know what I'm saying. What we have to do is we have to have a life that is committed to living right before God. Amen? A life that is committed to it. Now, we may not always do it, but a life that's committed to it, when we fall short, that's the exception, not the rule. Amen. So we thank God for the grace that comes with it that allows us to make mistakes and to fail. And we haven't forfeited our opportunity to walk free of sickness and disease. But we can't live sloppy and, and walk in this world free of sickness and disease. It's not going to happen. It's not even possible. So it's going to take a high level of living right. It's going to take a lot of effort to live right. And and so what we have to see is we have the, the, our, our, our live right trajectory has to be like this. You know, because when you first get saved, you're going to be tripping and stumbling all over the place. But the trajectory needs to go like this. All right. So if the tra trajectory is like this. You don't have a shot at this. But if it's like this, Lord, every year, I'm getting closer and closer to perfection. I'm getting closer and closer to just obeying everything you tell me. Then we can experience life without sickness and disease. Amen? Because I can tell you right now, I don't do everything right. But I can also tell you I'm committed to walking right before God. I, listen, obeying God is something that I'm serious about. I mean, I'm serious about it, and, and I don't mean just the big stuff. Hey Amen. You know, we don't, you know, people don't cuss, don't drink, don't smoke, don't, don't fornicate because they're married. If they weren't married, that might be a different testimony, but anyway. And they think, I'm, I'm, I'm good. No, it's, 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 it takes more than that. Hey Amen. It takes walking in the light that we have. All right, so let's turn to Exodus, and I want to spend a, mo a moment here, Exodus 28, because I want to just branch out and go a little bit beyond this while we're kind of on the way. Now, I'm telling you right now that 
I'm getting ready to read almost the entire chapter of Exodus 28. But while I'm reading it, I want you to, I want you to be pulling out some things, okay? I want you to look for two things. One is look for every instance of a particular sickness or disease that we come across. Y'all got that? What did I say, Exodus? Deuteronomy, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 28. Um, So I want you to look for every instance of a specific sickness or disease, and then I want us to identify what else we find that's not specifically sickness and disease, but it's something, it's another category. And so you all know that Deuteronomy 28 is, is, is a list of the things that come upon mankind because of sin. And so one of the things that, we, that I'm telling you right now is sickness and disease is one of the things that comes upon man when we don't obey God. But there are other things too. So I want you to be looking. We're just going to just take note of them. We're not going to really talk about them, but I want to just take note of all the things that are impacted if we won't walk right before God. Y'all, y'all got me? All right. So I'm going to start reading here at verse... 15, I believe, is where he starts, stops talking about what happens if you do good, do right, and then he starts talking about all the stuff that happens if you won't do right from verse like 15 to verse 60 something. So, verse 15, but it shall come to pass if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes which I command you today that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Cursed in the city, cursed in the country, cursed your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your land, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Cursed when you come in and cursed when you go out. The Lord will send on you cursing and confusion and rebuke in all that you set your hands to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doing in which you have forsaken me. The Lord will make the plague cling to you until he has consumed you from the land which you are going to possess. The Lord will strike you with consumption, with fever, with inflammation, with severe burning, uh, with severe burning fever. And with the sword, with scorching and mildew, they shall pursue you until you perish. All your heavens which are over your head shall be bronze, and the earth which is under you shall be iron. The Lord will charge, will change the rain of your land to powder and dust. From the heaven it shall come down on you until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways from before them. And you shall become troublesome to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your carcasses shall be food for all the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. And no one shall frighten them away. The Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt, with tumors, with scab and the itch from which you cannot be healed. The Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of heart. You shall grope at noonday as a blind man gropes in darkness. You shall not prosper in your ways. You shall not... You shall only be oppressed and plundered continually. No one shall save you. You shall betroth the wife, but another man shall lie with her. You shall build a house, but you shall not dwell in it. You shall plant a vineyard, but you shall not gather the grapes of it. Your ox shall your ox shall be slaughtered before your eyes, but you shall not eat the fruit of it or not eat of it. Your donkey shall be violently taken away from before you and shall not be restored to you. Your sheep shall be given to your enemies and you shall have no one to rescue. Your sons and your daughters shall be given to another people, and your eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all day long, and there shall be no strength in your hands. A nation with whom you have not known shall eat the fruit of your land and the produce of your labor, and you shall only be oppressed and crushed continually. So you shall be driven mad because of the sight which your eyes shall see. The Lord will strike you in the knees and on the legs with severe boils which cannot be healed from the sole of your foot to the top of your head. The Lord will bring upon you and the king who you set over you. The Lord will bring you and a king who you set over you to a nation which neither you nor your fathers have known. And there you shall serve other gods, wood and stone. And you shall become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all the nations where the Lord will drive you. You shall carry much seed out to the field, but gather little in. 
for the locust shall consume it. You shall plant vineyards and tend them, but you shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. How many of y'all ready for me to stop? It's, this, this is a rough life. Amen. And we only on verse 40. You know, it goes all the way over to 60, uh, 68. All right. You shall have verse 40 olive trees throughout all your territory, but you shall not anoint yourself with the oil for your olives shall drop off. You'll, you shall begat sons and daughters, but they won't be yours for they shall go into captivity. Locusts shall consume all your trees and the produce of your land. The alien who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. You sh uh, he shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, you shall be the tail. Moreover, if all that isn't enough, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments, his statutes, which he commanded you. And they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder because you, have not deserved, because you did not serve the Lord. Verse 47, verse 48, therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and thirst and nakedness and need of everything. He'll put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. The Lord will bring a nation against you from afar. Verse 49, from the end of the earth as swift as an eagle flies, a nation whose language you will not understand, a fierce countenance. Verse 51, they shall eat the increase of your livestock and the produce of your land until you are destroyed. They shall not leave you grain or new wine or oil or the increase of your cattle or the offspring of your flocks until they have destroyed you. They shall besiege you with all of your gates until your high and fortified walls in which you trust come down throughout all your land. Verse 53, you shall eat the fruit of your own body, the flesh of your own sons and your daughters whom the Lord your God has given you in the siege. Now, I'm going to skip this other part because it's basically talking about things going to be so bad they're going to be cannibals. They're going to eat one another. It talks about the woman eating her own placenta. I'm going to skip that. It's just a little unpleasant. Verse 58, if you do not carefully observe all the words of this law that are written in this book, that you may fear the glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God, then the Lord will bring upon you, verse 59, and your descendants extraordinary plagues, great and prolonged plagues, and serious and prolonged sicknesses. So now it's not just the sickness, but it's the duration. Moreover, verse 60, he will bring back on you all the diseases of Egypt, which you were afraid of, and they will cling to you. Verse 61, also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of the law will the Lord bring upon you until you are destroyed. Now I'm going to stop right there because I don't want you just to be totally depressed. So, so we see here a very vivid picture of what happens to man when we refuse to live by God's commands and refuse to obey him. So what I want to ask you now is name some of the specific sicknesses or diseases that we read. Inflammation. You know what that inflammation is? Arthritis. <laughs> we, were <laughs> we stumbled across Sanford and Son yesterday, and he did his old famous line, I can't pick that up because of my arthritis. <laughs> Skin conditions. Give me some skin conditions. Eczema. Psoriasis. So skin conditions. It's all stuff that come on man when we refuse to live right before God. What else? Consumption. So those are diseases that make waste you away. Wasting diseases. That's the... Uh, she gave the uh, literal definition of consumption. All right, what else? Madness. So now we got mental, mental health issues. That word madness, uh, the literal definition of that is craziness. That's the literal Hebrew definition. It's craziness and uh, where are you? Feelings of anxiety. 
So those are the two things that it's talking about there. So we got mental, Ill mental illnesses. Ringworm? Was that in there? Did I miss that? Oh, that's a skin condition. Okay. Skin condition, yes. Oh, yeah, Facebook, you all too. What did we see? What kind of specific things did we see? Uh, I got somebody in here telling me, so you can go ahead and make the comment, and I'll know. All right, what else did you see? Anything else? Blindness. All right. Come on, Facebook. Ringworm all you got? Acne, okay. Loss of strength, so just weakness. Did y'all see in there tumors? Tumors. Anything else did you notice specifically? I'm sorry? Yes. Problems with the knees, so joint problems. You don't need, I'm not going to say this right. You don't need conglosamine, chondroitin. You need to live right. <laughs> Guclosamine, chondroitinus, glue, whatever. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Plagues. I didn't look that up, but I meant to. Plagues. Those are things like coronavirus, covid all right, so these are all specific things that he has named. A lot, of, a lot of us women have fibroids. Oh, those are tumors, right? Yeah. All right, thanks for sharing that, Catherine. We appreciate that. Um, so these are all specific things. Now, how many of y'all know somebody with any or all of these? These are all common in the human experience. But you know why it's common in the human experience? Because sin is common in the human experience. Then, over in verse 68, it sums it up and says... I'm sorry, not 68, 61. It says, also every sickness and every plague. So now he gave these specifics, but then he ended it up with everything. So everything that's named and everything that's not named. Now, real quick, let's, um, let's talk about what other things that... Outside of sickness and disease, did we see that man, men, uh, mankind experiences because we won't obey God? What'd you say? Okay, Micah was struck by the cannibalism. Okay, so we'll, we'll broaden that out and say financial difficulties. All right. Financial problems. Um, what did you say? Was it you? children that's right financial actually you know what I'm gonna that's all right financial problems now I'm going to uh, I'm going to expand somebody said children problems with your children I'm gonna expand that just to include relationship problems because you notice marriage was in there so marriages are impacted our relationships are impacted when we don't live right. All right, what else did you notice? All right, so we got, I'm going to just call that defeat. We will experience defeat and bondage. I'm going to bondage. All right? Homelessness. Homelessness. All right. Let me see. 
Yeah, I'm going to lump that under financial problems, financial difficulties. Yes, drought. So these are all the problems and more that we deal with in the earth because we won't obey God. But these are all the problems that we can avoid if we obey God. And I'm thankful, I don't know about y'all, but I'm thankful for Galatians 3.13. When I read stuff like this, I'm j- I just get so thankful for Galatians 3.13. So just to um, boost morale, I'm going to jump over to Galatians 3.13. Let's just look at that j- as a morale booster. Yes, Shaney said, unfaithful spouses. All right, Galatians. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 reads this. Let's read that together just so we can all get this morale boost. Galatians, the third chapter, the 13th verse. Ready? Read. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Whoo, thank you, Jesus. Deuteronomy 28 describes all the curses. It said, if you don't obey me, all these curses will come upon you. And I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that Christ redeemed me from the curse of the law. Glory to God. So now all I have to do is just live right before him and I don't have to worry about this stuff. And the fact that he redeemed us allows us some, uh, some grace that even if we do fall short, that we can still uh, be spared from all this. Now, I said fall short. I didn't say live raggedy. All right? So this is another verse that, that, that tells us If we don't do these things, then we will not experience these things. Amen? Turn to Proverbs chapter 3. Now, let let me say that what we're not saying here is if you experience sickness that this is the reason why. I need to be clear about that because Satan will try to pull that on you. I just said what this is one of the, this, these things happen if we do, but it doesn't mean that everybody that has sickness and disease is because of this. Y'all get the difference? Okay. So Proverbs chapter three is what I said. Let's look here at, um, I'm going to read into this just because it's, it's just blessed. I'm going to start in verse five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. Verse seven and eight is what I want to get to. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It, what is it? Departing from evil will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Amen. So if we depart from evil then we'll have health and strength. Not just health, but health and strength. And I'm going to go ahead and read verse 9 and 10 just because that's the good stuff too. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Updating that into today's vernacular. Your bank account will be filled with plenty. Your savings with new money. Glory to God. So here we see that if we depart from evil, it will be health. It will be health. So as we walk up right before God, health is released to us. Glory to God. Health is released to us as we depart from evil. Let's look at John 14, 15. I'm sorry, John 5, verse 14. So what I'm showing you is from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, 
It shows us that the way we live before God, our obedience impacts our, our level of health. That's what we're, we're showing you. John chapter 5. And you all know this, uh, this historical account, so I'm gonna, I don't need to read the whole thing. This is the man at the pool of Bethesda, and you all know uh, the angel came down and stirred the water. Uh, Toya refer referred to this last week. Um, and so Jesus came, and the guy got healed. So what I want to jump down to is this, verse 14, um, well, verse 13. But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. Verse 14, afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. So, again, the point that we're making is there is a, there is a connection between sin and sickness and righteousness and health. So Jesus told him, I've healed you. Go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon you. So let's flip that. If you sin, something worse is going to come on you. If you don't, you're good to go. Amen? Now let's go back, let's go to the end, let's go to Revelation. Chapter 2, and this is the letter to the church at Thyatira. Verse 18, and to the angel of the church at Thyatira write, These things says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. As for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Now, I want to stop here and say one of the unfortunate things is, is that every, every, just about every place the translators saw the word fornication they translated it to sexual immorality. This verse is not talking about sexual immorality at all. It's really talking about idolatry. So this prophetess was teaching them to commit idolatry. Uh, in fact, what does that word mean? I looked it up. Did I write it down? Uh, I did not. Oh, wait, I wrote it down here. So the word sexual immorality, that they translate as sexual immorality, the literal is to act the harlot. That's literally what that word means. And so we know that God accused them of adultery when they would follow another God. He, was, he said, you committed, you're adulteress. So it's not, this is not about sex, it's about idolatry. And so all the rest of the places, I'm just going to change the word for you. Because I wrote, I crossed them out in my Bible and, and, and changed it. Verse 21, and I gave her time to repent of her idolatry or her harlotry, and she did not repent. Now get verse 22. Indeed, I will cast her into a what? A sick bed. And those who commit adultery, you see that? See, now they translated it right, commit adultery. Those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. Verse 23, I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the mind and the heart and will give to each one of you according to your works. So all the way at the end, God is saying this prophetess is teaching my people to commit idolatry and I'm going to cast her into a sickbed and the people who follow her doctrine will be killed with death. So, if we have any hope of attaining God's complete will in living without sickness and disease, 
the first thing we have to be looking at is I need to be living right. Amen? Amen. And I mean, I mean to be living right on a high level. Because what I'm after is on a high level. I'm after something precious. I'm after God's best. And so it's going to require my best. Now, let me be clear. Uh, because I don't want people thinking to be hearing that I have to be perfect. To get God's best, we need to give them our best. One person's best is different than another person's best. And our best changes over time. So my best when I first got saved is very different than my best now. Y'all following me? So, so we, I don't want people to feel left out because they may be new in the faith or they may, you know, have some struggles. Again, the, traje- the trajectory we're looking for is like this. Amen. If you're still stumbling over the same thing you've been stumbling over 5, 15, 10 years, 4, 45 years ago, you got a problem on your hands. But if, if we're just going up with God and my life now, my, my walk with God in terms of my, my lifestyle is here now and it was there then. And in three years, it's going to be up there. And in five years after that, it's going to be up there. We can do this. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. But this is where it starts. And this also explains, in a lot of cases, why uh, many don't ever get here. Because I got to tell you, we have, uh, it's it's approaching epidemic status. The, 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 um, the failure of God's people to really press to live right. Now, I got this the Wednesday night crowd. So as I look out and I look on the Facebook feed, I, do, I, I there are people in here that are really committed to living right. Amen. And so, so this is a thing. This area is maybe not an area for some of you because we're going to talk about several things. And so everything that we talk about is not necessarily going to apply to you. But uh, because we're instructing, we need to tell everybody everything. Amen. So, so uh, you know, if you are walking right before God and you have been, check this box off. Don't, 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 don't worry about this box. Don't let Satan try to bring condemnation, you know, because you cussed somebody out yesterday. Just ask God to forgive you and keep it moving. Now, if you're cussing people out every day, that's a little different. All right? Y'all with me so far? So I'm going to wrap it up with this um, because, see, I know people think this, this, this is basic. Yeah, we, yeah, we know we got to live right Yeah be doers of the word and not hearers only. But I got to tell you, I wonder, I don't even wonder, I don't believe that, I believe that there are people who don't really believe this. That if we refuse to live right, these things happen to us. There are people that I'm just not convinced believe it. Because if you really believe this, would it not affect the way you live your life if you really believed it? Because I'm going to tell you right now. I love God. And I live right because I love him. But I'm going to be honest. I'm scared to do wrong. And this is why. I am scared to do wrong. Because I believe this. I know this is true. And I don't want any parts of any of it. But I'm telling you, I'm not convinced that everybody, everybody really believes this. In fact, I know they don't. Because have you ever been, if you're in the room with somebody, don't turn around and look at them if this is them. Have you ever been talking to somebody who live raggedy and they confused as to why something bad happened? And, and oh, if you could be in my mind sometimes when I'm talking to these people. 
I want to be like, what is you, ignorant? (laughs) What do you mean, why? I mean confused. You you, You won't live right for three days at a time. And you've been sinning that sin for 15 years regularly. And can't figure out why things difficult. So I'm telling you, people do not believe this. People do not believe. And that's why we have to talk about it. Because people need to understand that, that living, living a sinful lifestyle and living in rebellion to God is dangerous it's life and death dangerous turn to uh john chapter five i didn't mean john i'm in first corinthians you know how sometimes when you say it's the other word sounds so close you say the wrong word you know john first corinthians It could happen as you're saying, John, if 1 Corinthians comes out. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. So so here's what I want to, what we have to understand. Sin kills. Let me hear you say that. Sin kills. Sin brings death. Two ways. Number one, sin literally kills our body. Have you ever noticed, if you read through the Old Testament, after Adam, if you just kind of follow up until God shortened the life, uh, capped the life at 120, if you notice generally, people's lives start getting shorter. You know why that is? Because they, 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 sin was taking a greater hold. And the glory and the life of God that we had in the, that this body had in the beginning, it got further and further away from the glory and more and more clo- uh, enveloped by sin. And so the body, because remember the first body, glory of God. And, it, and over time, people start living shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter because sin kills the body the other thing is sin brings judgment now let me let me read this real quick uh, verse 1 of 1 Corinthians chapter 5 it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles that a man has his father's wife So there's a man that is having sexual relations with his stepmother. So uh, I'm going to skip down. Verse 4 says, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. So... What this is saying is, is that if we persist in wrongdoing, how many of y'all know that the angels of the Lord encamp around those who fear him? That if we, when we walk upright with God, he has got a hedge of protection all around us. But if we persist in wrongdoing, you know what happens? You know what happens when that hedge come down? Ooh, Satan like, yes, I can do anything. And so when judgment comes, God brings down the heads, the protection. Satan comes in, and one of the first things he brings is sickness and disease and death. Turn with me to uh, flip over to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to talk more about this, or one of us will talk more about this down the road, but I want to pull something out of it for tonight's class so uh 
Verse 27, this is talking about the Lord's Supper, taking communion. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Now get verse 30. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many have died prematurely. So he's saying that this, this, this sin causes people to be weak. So see, there's some people that are weak because they won't live right. There's some people who are sick because they won't live right. And there's some people who have died or who are dying because they won't live right. And I'm going to close with this. Y'all with me today? So if we have any hope of walking through this life without sickness and disease, we have to be serious about living right before God. Can y'all see that? Uh, all right, let's see, which one will I tell? This is a Brother Hagin story. He went to a hospital to, uh, to uh, pray for a guy that was in the hospital sick. I'll figure out which one I'm going to tell as I go. And so he went, uh, and he, was, he went to pray for the dude, put his hand on his head, and he started to pray. And he started to say, Lord, heal him. And he said, but instead, bless him came out. He said, I could not make my mouth say heal. So I started over again. Lord, bless him. And so he's like, all right, I'm going to try this again. Lord, bless him. He said, I literally could not make my, my mouth say heal. So I know something's going on. So while this is going on, while I'm praying, I'm talking to the Lord. Lord, why can't I pray for this man's healing? And the Lord said to him, because he will die. He has, he has refused to live right for an extended period of time, over 30 years. And I judged him, turned him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit would be saved in the day of the Lord. He had lung cancer. And so... This, this sickness came upon him because he refused to live right. Amen? And he died because he refused to live right. But the flip side is if we take seriously walking before God, we have the opportunity to live free of sickness, free of disease, free of arthritis, free of eczema, free of psoriasis. Free of acne, free of cancers, free of mental illness and anxiety, free of joint pain, free of tumors, free of weakness. And that's what we're looking for, to live free of all these things. Amen. So one of the things that we have to do if we want to have an, op uh, have an opportunity to live free of sickness, disease, and pain is we have to obey God. Amen. The scripture that Toya uh, read last week, Isaiah 1-9, she dealt with the willing part. Tonight, I dealt with the obedient part. He said, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good. You'll live the good. Amen. Confident, taking back the land is promised.